Ninja Rapid Reaction Force is the only core of its kind on Ariadna. They are the result of the Ariadnan efforts to deal with the necessities of a changing world. The Ninja Rapid Reaction Force is structured with a single purpose in mind to react quickly to any insurgent forces inside Ariadna territory and in the neutral zone as well. The MRF has been designed essentially as a rapid reaction force, hence the name, and usually get into contact with the enemy first. They're able to react to calls for civilian aid as well, and often act when workers or civilians get in trouble, making them the firemen of the Ariadna army. They are the primary combat response, immediate reinforcement, or instruction force in service to the entirety of the Ariadna population. Howdy folks and welcome back to Concilium Watch. I'm Austin and today we're going over my second favorite overview, well second favorite army. We're doing an overview for the Merovingia Rapid Reaction Force or MRF. Super excited. Guys have got better in N4 than they were in N3. So might as well just jump right into the mix here. And the first profile that we are going to go over is the Metros. The Order Monkeys for Murph. So here, they're light infantry, so 4-4 four, four movement, 14 CC, 10 BS, 11 Fizz, 12 Whip, 1 Armor, no BTS, 1 Wound, availability total. Total terrain, and they can fire Team Core. There is nothing special at all about their stat line. At all. They are just uninspiring, is really what they are. And they've got a lot of profiles here, but I want to show you the only profiles that you're actually going to be using are the lieutenant option. Yes, it's only a whip 12, but you'll be okay. There's no SWC and he's only eight points. The regular rifle for only eight points is good. Paramedic, bring the paramedic. If you're going to make a core of metros, yeah, bring the paramedic. But I want to give special interest to one profile on here. And after that, the rest of them don't exist. Heavy machine gun, don't waste points, don't waste SWC. Grenade launcher, really don't waste your time. Uh, rifle decharges with the camouflage infiltration is okay. And the grenade launcher with the camouflage and infiltration is okay. But the rifle with the Panzerfaust, it's got camouflage one use, infiltration, rifle, Panzerfaust, pistol, and a close combat weapon, no SWC, and 12 points. Yes. Yes to this all day. Remember why I said like this up, like all their stat line is really uninspiring and it really is until you can put them as camo in the midfield with a Panzerfaust. You got to remember Panzerfaust have the HMG range bands. So you're already in the midfield. You're most likely going to be in good range and they are there to be hindrances. They are defensive pieces in an army that doesn't have great defensive pieces. I mean, they do, but you really don't want to use them. They are like kings of Panzerfaust is what Merovingia is really good at. And these are order wasters. These are defensive pieces that are order wasters. And they're fantastic at it, coordinating orders with their Panzerfaust. And you don't care if they die because once the Panzerfaust are gone, they're going to drop down if they don't die and immediately just go into suppressive fire. That's what they're there for. But it's 12 points and it's insanely good. It's insanely good. Like, don't let that stat line and just because they're metros fool you. That camouflage and having the infiltration and already in good range bands for that Panzerfaust is money. So much money. So anybody that's played Hawk Islam will tell you that Daylami. Yes, always bring Daylami. These are more expensive Daylami at double the cost, but they're regular orders. Met the Metro Rifle Panzerfaust for 12 points. You'll at least bring two in every single list. I know I do, and they also make it into my vanilla army as well. I also bring two of these guys. That's how good they actually are. So remember that. So don't worry about the rest of the profiles. You want the rifle? You want the camouflage one use and infiltration, rifle Panzerfaust for 12 points, the regular paramedic, and the lieutenant. The rest of them do not exist. And we're going to move right along from the Metro into the Loot Gurus. These guys are basically built just to handle antipodes. Remember I, in the beginning I said these guys are the firemen. 
Murph overall as the fireman, they deal with all kinds of stuff. Well, because Maravingia sits in the middle of Ariadna, where you have U.S. Ariadna off to the east, Tack is to the west and to the south, and Caledonia is to the top. So everything kind of runs through Meanberg, which is the capital of Merovingia. And so there's a lot of dog face problems because everything has to run through there. Well, this is what the loop gurus are made for. They're here to deal with dog faces. So they have 4-4 movement, 16 CC, 12 BS, 11 fizz, 13 whip, 2 armor, so a little bit on the higher side for light infantry, no BTS, and 1 wound. But they got some really cool things here. They got an X visor, which is like X visors on a whole unit? Yes, that's awesome. They have Courage, they have Fireteam Harrison, and you can Fireteam Core. This is a very good core. And they got some awesome weapons here, too. So you got the Viral Rifle for 21 points. Yes, all day yes, of with a Viral Rifle? Awesome. Then you got the Boarding Shotgun and Adhesive Launcher for 19 points. Also very good. Viral Rifle and Grenade Launcher, 1 SWC and 25 points. I don't really use that one that much it's not fantastic to waste a whole swc i mean it's not like you end up maxing out your swc score in any area especially murph however the grenade launcher uh there's better long-range weapons than you want to bring than this guy yes it makes the grenade launcher fire a little bit further having the x visor but i don't think it's worth the swc and then you have the Loot Guru with a sniper rifle. Now, this is interesting because a sniper rifle with an X visor means there are no negative range bands. And it's only half an SWC and it's one point less than the viral rifle. That's not bad. And that's a good defensive piece to have. And it's a high damage weapon that you can put out on ARO. It's really nice. Really nice indeed. I like the Loot Guru core and I find myself making the loot guru core over every other kind of core that you would usually make just because it's just it's solid. That's what the loot gurus are. They're just solid. And I mean, you're going to hear me say that a lot, that everything in Merovingia is really solid because nothing hugely stands out minus three profiles that I'm, well, there's no, there's some awesome profiles in Merovingia as a whole, but most of the regular line troops are really just solid. Moving right along from the loot gurus, we're gonna get into the paracommandos. Paracommandos have got a brand new resculpt for Cosmoflot, and they got changes from N3 to N4, and they are just amazing. And look at that sculpt, it's absolutely gorgeous, like a halo jumper, and I love it. But for the paracommandos, movement 4-4, 14 CC, 12 BS, 11 Fizz, 14 Whip. Remember that 14 Whip. It's going to come in later. It's very handy. Two Armor, no BTS, one Wound, availability six. But they have Mimetism. They're a Parachutist troop with Terrain 0G, but they also have Mimetism. So they can drop on any side of the board that you want to and have Mimetism. That's awesome. That's amazing. So don't really worry about this first one that you see right here, the rifle and the chain cult for 20 points. Don't really waste your time. Don't waste your time. The rest of them though are all awesome at what they do. So the AP Spitfire on a BS-12 with Mimetism, that's awesome. Yeah, 31 points. You know, you can definitely bring the Paracommando with the AP Spitfire. That's amazing. The two FO options are also Really good. Oh wow, because they got they all got four observers. So you remember that you can now shoot in reaction in ARO to forward observe something. So with these guys having boarding shotguns, flash pulses, and D charges, along with being able to forward observe, that whip 14 ends up being really good. Ends up being really good. And because they have D charges, they can complete other missions. If you've watched any of my other overviews and like I've taught if you watch my Caledonia one in particular, I talk I just gush over the SAS and how good they can fill so many roles. That's what the Paracommando does for Merovingia. 
it can fill so many roles as a specialist that can immediately get to the midfield. It can complete objectives with the D charges. It can absolutely destroy things for missions like mind wipe because of the D charges. Having the flash pulse and being able to forward observe, it gives it a longer range weapon, though not to kill. It can do stop it from getting the paracommando itself from dying. And having a boarding shotgun for, so you've got a template weapon and a plus six weapon at really close range, making it be eight shooting on 18s. Really nice. So you got the regular FO for 24 points, and then you have it's. Same loadout. Everything is the exact same except for two more points. You can bring a BS attack plus one damage boarding shotgun. That's a damage 15 boarding shotgun that can also be AP. Absolutely. So a damage 15 AP boarding shotgun. That's redonkulous, and I love it. If you have the two extra points, definitely upgrade if you're thinking about bringing pair commandos. And the paramedic, that's just another specialist to throw down. I don't usually bother with the paramedic unless I know I need to like pick something up for that's going to be in the midfield, which, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things in the midfield for Merovingia. They really don't know what, besides like their core link team, there's really, they don't know what a deployment zone is. Everything is in midfield. They have a very strong camo game and midfield game. They're there to just, like, hinder the opponent the entire time. So I don't usually bother with a paramedic. I usually just deal with the forward observers, but the paramedic is not a bad specialist to bring that can just drop into the midfield. That's enough about paracommandos, because paracommandos are amazing. Moving on, we're going to talk about the Zuaves. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering all of these names. But I am, as you can clearly tell, I am not French in the slightest. So my French-speaking people, I am very sorry for butchering up these names. But the Zouaves are Panzerfaust King. They got some really cool weapons here that you normally just, like, don't see anywhere else in Ariadne. And that's a lot, goes a lot for Merovingia as a whole. But they got some really cool stuff. So they are they are light infantry with movement for four. 15 CC, 12 BS, 10 Fizz. I'm upset about the Fizz. Zuavs in history in are like the best of the best, and they've got Fizz 10. That's like Zanshi style Fizz. Y'all need to work out some more. But Whip 13, 2 armor, no BTS, 1 wound. They've got Courage, Dogged, and 4 deployment plus eight inches. So these guys are also starting in the midfield. They immediately start in the midfield. Now, some key profiles that I do want to point out, the only gripe, well, before I get to that, the only real gripe that I have with the Zuavs are don't have any form of mimetism. They have nothing to kind of like save them because you're already starting in the midfield with two armor Dodging is most likely not your best option, which is an absolute option for those that do play Ariadna. They usually have very high fizz. This, not so much. I mean, it's a 50-50 shot. You really don't want You usually are used to seeing higher things. But it goes back, these are just more expensive, and they have a lot of Panzerfaust here. There are a lot of Panzerfaust. So they're really just more expensive metros. In that sense, and that's the role that they usually tend to fill. Yeah, you can have a Ford Observer in the midfield. They got a rifle and a Panzerfaust for 21 points, but they also, almost all of them come with assault pistols, so they're really good at close range as well. They kind of fill multiple roles, but they're expensive for what they do when metros can kind of do it better. Let me do my old Frenchie guys. Let me know now in the comments if I'm really missing something with the Zuavs. I really don't have a whole lot of luck with them, except for two profiles. Except for two profiles. I'll take it back, three. Take it back with three profiles. And that's the Rifle, Panzerfaust, and EM Mines. When did we get EM Mines? With a saw pistol and a close combat weapon for 21 points. Yes, because you're going to go up against a lot of heavy infantry because we don't have much heavy infantry in Merovingia. We have one. 
No, two. I take it back. We have two, but one's a character. You have one. So ha- being able to coordinate order EM mines onto the ground and make more camo tokens is really, really nice. And the other two that I'm going to go over are the Sapper profiles. Sapper, I'm going to go over Sapper right quick. So for an entire order, you dig a foxhole. They become, Your size two model now becomes, you have size three cover in a 360 degree arc, and you also have mimetism. This is where the Zuov Sappers are, end up being pretty decent. This is why they're more survivable than the regular Zuov, Zuovs is because of the sapper state. And you can start them in the sapper state, it will in the foxhole state using sapper. You got the heavy machine gun with a pistol and close combat weapon for 1.5 SWC and 29 points. I have used this thing to just lock down an area and make my opponent have to waste orders because I if I'm going to end up shooting you, I get up as long as, as soon as nobody's there and it's my turn, get Move up, get a better position, because I'm already in the midfield, which is wonderful for a heavy machine gun. Get in a better position, hide, be completely out of line of sight, and then go into foxhole state, because even as it, and it moves size three outside, and now you can be seen, it happens at the end of the order, so they cannot provoke any AROs whatsoever. Heavy machine gun, Sapper Zuov is awesome and i encourage you to try it the other sapper is the sapper sniper for with a pistol close combat weapon and 0.5 swc and 25 points also a really solid pick because he's already for deployment eight inches so he's already in the midfield he can get to a position that's not in your deployment zone that's got a really good lane of fire to create another alley for you to just really hinder your opponent. There's not a lot of big, oh, I'm just going to Rambo pieces. That's what the word I'm looking for is Rambo. There's not a lot of Rambo pieces in Merovingia. It's really as the team works as a whole, they have to react to things. They are more of a defensive army, but they're really solid that way because everything really melds together to be a hindrance to your opponent for them to complete the mission. They really have to slog through it. And so having that sapper sniper already in the midfield in good range, you can get him in good ranges on a corner of the board and just be a total hindrance to your enemy because he has mimetism, he has cover no matter what, unless somebody has marksmanship, of course. It's just, and they have dogged so they can just keep fighting. That's what the Zuovs are there for, is just to be a deterrence to the enemy and have them slog through orders. They're expensive order wasters, except for that heavy machine gun. I mean, yeah, he is that, but he can also get some really good kills in. All right, moving right along. We are done with the light infantry for now, and we are going to move on to our single medium infantry, the Briskards. All right. First thing you're going to notice about the Brisk Guards is they all have MSV-1. That's just standard. Everything has MSV-1, which is really awesome. So they have 4-4 movement, 16 CC, 12 BS, 11 Fizz, 13 Whip, 2 Armor. These are light medium infantry. Light medium infantry. 0 BTS, 1 Wound, and availability 5, so they can make... They've got Courage, they have Harris, they have Mountain Terrain, and Fireteam Core. But it's the MSV-1 that's really just solid here, because that's a lot of MSV-1, because you'll get a lot of MSV-1 really in Ariadna as a whole, so being able to have an MSV-1 entire unit, and for as cheap as they are, is really, dare I say it, I'm going to say it again, solid. It's super solid. Now, the ones I'm going to point out here is really any of these any of these are really good options um not maybe it's not so much the lieutenant option i'm going to show you your next lieutenant or your most likely lieutenant option here in a minute but the paramedic 
saw 25 points, marksman rifle. I love that they all have marksman rifles. That's a, such a good weapon for an MSV-1 unit. And they all have assault pistols except for the sniper. So they're good at far range, at medium range. They're good at close range, being able to just wreck things. Brisk guards are super good. The FO Marksman Flash Pulse Salt Pistol for 24 points. He's one point cheaper than the paramedic. Regular Marksman Rifle for 23 points. Still a solid option. But these guys have the long range weapons. So if you're going to play a long range game, you're definitely going to bring the Brisk Guards. So they have an AP Sniper Rifle plus B- it has BS Attack Shock. For one SWC and 25 points. One SWC, 25 points, AP sniper, AP shock sniper rifle that has MSV1 is really, really nice. And I've had opponents just be like, I don't want to deal with that core and I'm going to run away from it. I know that doesn't seem real, especially with BS12. And I hear people now and I hear it all the time from the people that are, oh, BS12. Well, they're elitist and they're wrong. BS12 is fine, especially in a core link team, and especially with that AP sniper rifle. But also, they have another long range weapon in the heavy rocket launcher. Remember, also has MSV1. He keeps the assault pistol and a close combat weapon for 1.5 SWC and 19 points. That is highway robbery. A heavy rocket launcher for 19 points is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I want to bring a I bring a briskard core sometimes just because I want that heavy rocket launcher because he's just so cheap and he can just fill in a link and be fantastic. I like the brisk guards, older models, but you can, a lot of, all these models are out of production, and I apologize if I'm getting you super hyped for the French and they're all out of production and they're really, really hard to find. I've been fortunate enough to find them all, but TAC and US Ariadna make some excellent proxies for Murph. So, brisk guards, very solid choice for a core fire team. Moving on, we're going to talk about our only heavy infantry. And I really think that the these guys are the glue that holds Merovingia together. Are the Moblots. The only HI. And they have some awesome choices. There is not a bad profile. You have an unused, you really have some unused profiles, but none of these profiles are bad at all. Moblots are amazing. And the only, that's the only model that I don't have are Moblots and they're just don't like the model. So I'm using Marauders as my Moblots and it works out fantastic. So they're 4 4 movement, 16 CC, 13 BS, 12 Fizz. 13 whip, 3 armor, and 3 BTS? What is this with the BTS? Moblas at BTS? What is this madness? One wound, nice two, and availability four. And they are wild card. Moblots are wild card. So you can fit them in to a loop guru fire team, or a brisk guard fire team, or a metro fire team. It doesn't matter. Moblots go everywhere. They can make a fire team core of their own. They can also make a Harris. They're shock immune. They have jungle terrain and BS attack shock. Overall, not fantastic. It doesn't look like something incredibly special, but they are special for what they do for this army. Moblots are, you're going to bring three to four, two, three to four Moblots in every single list that you make just because Moblots are just so solid and survivable, incredibly survivable, especially for the points that they are because if you'll look, the basic guy, your basic AP rifle, light shotgun, pistol, close combat weapon is 23 points. That is the same price as a Briskard with a marksman rifle and assault pistol. That is my biggest gripe with the Briskards and the Moblots is they are the same prices. So you can't cheapen it. Any, if you're going to go Briskards and Moblots together, you can't make it any cheaper except with that heavy rocket launcher. 
But the heavy machine gun Moblot, awesome. AP rifle ice shotgun, awesome. Boarding shotgun, Panzerfaust. I have won games with a boarding shotgun and Panzerfaust Moblot. He just came in, and I don't know how. I got extremely lucky, and he ramboed through that. The Moblot Engineer, if you absolutely need an engineer, Moblot Engineer is here for you. You usually don't see him that often, though. The Paramedic, absolutely. And then you got two lieutenant options. Do not worry about the lieutenant option with the heavy machine gun. I There's no chain of command. Don't make your primary shooter be the lieutenant. It's a bad idea. But the AP rifle, light shotgun, lieutenant for 23 points, that is my go-to lieutenant. If I'm making a Moblot or a Merovingia list and I want to play Merovingia, it's either that or the Metro, and it's usually the Moblot just because he's a little bit more survivable with three armor and three BTS. He's just a little bit more survivable. And an AP rifle is nothing to sneeze at. That's a good weapon. The you can t- We can talk about the Infiltration Mimetism minus three options are both really solid. They are pricey, especially by Ariadna standards, being HI that start in the midfield, but they both have AP rifles, they both have light shotguns, and then you have an EM mines, again, with the EM mines. I don't know, but I love it. And a Panzerfaust. This, I'm telling you, these guys are the Panzerfaust kings. Merovingia is the Panzerfaust kings. They're, your opponent is just going to eat Panzerfaust the entire game, and it's it makes me very happy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Love it. But the infiltration options are are really good. They are really good. I usually don't take them that often just because they are only availability four. And I like to have a full link team. And so if I'm going to make a link team, I usually try to bring the Lieutenant and I absolutely bring the paramedic and the next profile I'm going to talk about, which is just wonderful is the heavy machine gun sapper for 1.5 SWC and 30 points. It's so good. It's so good. I can't ex- stress enough. And I've seen haters be like, oh, you know, the mob bot sapper is not worth the points. Save yourself two points and don't get the sapper. No. Because of what you can do with the sapper, giving him mimetism and giving yourself an edge and always being able to have cover in the sapper state or in foxhole state, is really good, and it just gives you just that little bit of an edge. And I, it's it's solid. It's so solid. It's so good. So good. So he's usually my point man is the Moblot Sapper Heavy Machine Gun. But the Paramedic, the Lieutenant, the Sapper are usually like I have those three in just about every single list that I make. And then I fill it in with Brisk Guards or Loop Gurus or Metros. That is my link team. But my bots are the glue that holds Merovingia together. And I love it. Love them. Next, we're going to talk about our skirmisher. Our single skirmisher, which is still, I still believe, top five skirmisher in the game. And that is the one, the only, the man myth legend, the Cheshire's. Cheshires are mm, amazing, and their models look excellent. Can't get over the Cheshires. Ugh. But we got 4-4 movement, 14 CC, 11 BS, 13 Fizz, 13 Whip, no armor, no PTS, as fits a normal skirmisher in Ariadna. One rune, bring four. They got their normal stuff. They got the camouflage, infiltration, mimetism, minus three, and surprise tag. They also have stealth. They also have total terrain. But it's the sixth sense. Yes, I hear you in the comments now. Sixth sense is not as good as it used to be. You can't wait and see what your opponent's going to do, decide what you're going to do. But you can't be snuck up on. You can shoot through smoke. There's so many good things about sixth sense, and having that on a skirmisher is insane and not just a skirmisher but a skirmisher that has a template weapon because all of them except for one profile comes with light flamethrowers the other one is a rifle adhesive launcher and decharges he's there for certain missions 
but I never see him. I literally never see him. The two that you're going, the two profiles that you are going to bring the most often, actually almost always, like 99.9% of the time are the last two. The Ford Observer, because you need midfield specialists, rifle, light flamethrower, flash pulse, and shock mines, pistol, close combat weapon, 20 points. For the same price and a .5 SWC with the same weapons minus the flash pulse is the Cheshire Mine Layer. You max these suckers out every time. You get two FOs, you get two mine layers. I have six camo markers in the midfield. Bring that up with your two metros that you should always anyway be bringing. And I've got eight camo markers automatically in the midfield from six models. That's a lot of camo. That's a lot of camo. Your opponent is going to have to guess which that, especially if for you new players, which is what these videos are built for. You're first getting into the N4 and you're learning, you've got your basics down and you're finally playing your first 300 point game. Chashers, all the camo in the world. And it's amazing. Love it. Cheshire's are ridiculously good with their light flamethrowers and having six cents already in the midfield. My claim to fame, why I think Cheshire's are just so amazing, again, extremely lucky, but I killed a Marut with two Cheshire light flamethrowers, and it was glorious, and I will never let Jonathan ever, ever, ever hear the end of it that I killed a Marut with a light flamethrower Cheshire. I can't talk enough about Cheshire's. They're amazing. Moving right along, we have a tag. Yes, yes, Ariadna does have a tag. It is not native to Ariadna, but it is a tag nonetheless, and it is the only sectorial that gets access to a tag as of right now. And that is the Anaconda. Anaconda mercenary tag. Anaconda has went through a little upgrade since N3, and it's just really nice. So you have 6-2 movement. Really solid movement. 18 CC, 13 BS, 16 Fizz, 13 Whip, 7 Armor, 6 BTS, and 2 Structure. You can bring two of these guys. They have the ECM Guided Minus 6. And Escape System. What is Escape System? There are only two things in all of Infinity that have the equipment Escape System. One is the Anaconda, and the other one is the Iguana and I'm going to explain to you how escape system works right quick. So after the Anaconda loses its two structure points, you will take a smoke template. You will place it on the battlefield with the Anaconda in the center of it. Then you will take your operator. It is not a pilot. It is an operator, the Anaconda operator, and put it into base to base with the Anaconda tag. Then you remove the tag. There is no picking up the Anaconda once it goes unconscious. It is removed from the board, but creates smoke for your operator to come out of. Now that we've explained escape system, we can move on. BS attack plus one damage. Courage. Dodge. Fizz 11. Yep. Fire team duo. Gizmo kit. Fizz 11. Do not bother trying to fix this thing. It should die in a blaze of glory like it's supposed to. Do not waste points. And it's not so much points. A slot on trying to fix this. It is heavy, it is giant HI. That's how you should treat the Anaconda, it's giant HI. Immunity shock and tactical awareness. Both options are really good. You can't go wrong with any one of these options. The AP Spitfire, Light Flamethrower, and Panzerfaust with an AP Close Combat Weapon, 1.5 SWC, 56 points. Nice, really, really nice. Also, for one point cheaper, heavy machine gun and a chain colt with a Panzerfaust AP close combat weapon, 1.5 SWC, and 55 points. You can't go wrong with the Anaconda. It is the worst tag in the game, but if you don't treat it like a tag and you treat it like a really big, a size 7 HI, it works amazing. And it's like the only real access to smoke other than... Two other guys in two other files in all of Merovingia. They lack smoke heavy. They like you don't have a lot of camo in Usaref. You don't have a lot of smoke in Merovingia. That is like their big thing. They're like, no, we don't do that very well. So the Anaconda, 
really can't go wrong. Their operator, once he's on the field, he's 4-4 movement, CC 13, 12 BS, 10 Fizz, 13 Whip, 1 Armor, and 3 BTS. His Courage, he is a specialist operative, and he keeps a Spitfire. It is not an AP Spitfire, but it is still a high burst weapon with BS-12 that should be in the midfield. I'm going to really preface that with should. It should be in the midfield. If your Anaconda is not in the midfield when it dies, you played the Anaconda wrong. Get the Anaconda to the midfield as quickly as humanly possible to frick shit up. Okay? Love the Anaconda. And the model looks awesome. Moving on. Oh, we finally made it, ladies and gentlemen. We have finally made it to the dynamic duo of death. Equip Mirage 5, Lieutenant Margot Berthier and Sergeant Lafayette Duroc. And their brand new models. Look, isn't he just the goodest boy? Oh, yes. So this dynamic duo is absolutely terrifying and amazing. They have to come together. That's a big thing about Equip Mirage 5. They have to come together. You can't just only take Margo. You can't only take Rock. They do come together, and it's 66 points and 2 SWC. But there's a reason that it's a whole 2 SWC. We're going to go over it. So for Margo, she's a mob lot. I want to like say that hard that she's just a superior mob lot. She's 4-4 movement, 16 close combat, 14 BS, and I'm going to stop with the 14 BS for a second because through all of this stuff, and now that Cosmoflot has come out and has some extra, like, technology stuff, Margo is the si still, still, the single best shooter, just pure straight BS shooter in all of Ariadna with her BS-14. Everything else is 13 and down. She is the only one. She has shock immunity, total terrain, and parachutist deployment zone with an AP rifle, a grenade launcher, and a light shotgun, pistol close combat weapon, and she is 37 points alone. You can't bring her alone, but she's only 37 points. A BS-14 with an AP rifle and a grenade launcher and a light shotgun in your enemy's deployment zone is absolutely terrifying. If your opponent knows that you're playing Merovingia, they are going to be sitting on the edge of their seat praying that you did not bring Margo because Margo is going to shoot them in the face. Dismantle link teams like they're nothing coming in on the side of the board, sneaking up there and just taking out a link team one by one by one. But before you do that, you should definitely talk about Sergeant Lafayette Duroc, who is a dog face that jumps out of an airplane. Did you believe that a dog face jumped out of an airplane? Nope, but Duroc can. So he is a warband. He is irregular and impetuous. So when he does do his parachutist deployment zone, you're choosing one or the other. Am I in the impetuous phase? Do I drop him? He will lose his irregular order. If you don't do the impetuous phase and you drop him on his irregular order, then you've already missed out your chance to use his impetuous order. So you're losing an order when you do drop him. But the next turn, if he's still alive, which is entirely possible, I've seen it happen. I have done it. Once you drop him and he survives, he will generate the two orders afterward, just not on the initial drop. But he's 6'4 movement, 23 CC, 10 BS. He's not going to be shooting anything anyway. We're not worried about the BS-10. 16 Fizz, 13 Whip, 3 Armor, no BTS, 2 Wounds. With Martial Arts Level 2, Courage, Dodge 1 Inch, Total Immunity, as all good boys should, Super Jump, and Vulnerability Viral. And he has the regular stuff that comes with... A normal dog face is a chain rifle, grenades, and smoke grenades with an AP close combat weapon. 29 points, grand total of 2 SWC and 66 points. But a dog in your deployment zone that throws smoke and can dismantle things is amazing. Everybody is like really scared of Margo, but they are absolutely terrified of Duroc because they're used to seeing Cameronians or 
Devil Dogs, Dog Faces, McMurrah on the other side of the board. I've got time to deal with this. I'm going to have get a couple of shots off but while they're throwing smoke to get to me. Nope, Duroc is already there. Drop Duroc first. If he takes a hit, fine. If he doesn't, move him and throw smoke where Margot can then drop safely into the smoke. Isn't that genius? Yes, why not clear the way for your best shooter in all of Ariadna? Drop to rock, move him out if he doesn't take a hit. That's fantastic. Throw smoke in the landing area that you're going to drop Margo and drop Margo so she can go kill things. Because Durak is going to do what all dog faces do and just go rip somebody's arm off and then beat them to death with it. From their deployment zone, which is still hilarious to me. I love that they got that new ability. Uh, love Mirage 5. Their new models are absolutely gorgeous. I'm looking at mine right now, and I'm just, oh, so pretty. So pretty. All right, moving on. Can't talk about Mirage 5 forever. Is Nof. Nof, Outlaw, Sniper. So, Nof is good. He's really good, especially in Merovingia, because he brings something to the table that Merovingia is missing. And do not, the worst thing you can do is if you know about Nuff and you know that he's a sniper, is to put him on ARO duty. No, he is an active turn killer. He is 100% an active turn killer. You should use him as such. If you're going second, you hide Nof. You hide him until it's time to shoot things. That's when you shoot things. Because he's got 4-4 four, four movement, 21 CC, 13 BS, 11 Fizz, 13 Whip, 1 Armor, no BTS. But he's got MSV1. Already looking good. BS attack, plus 1 burst. 3 shots from a multi-sniper rifle, you say. How indignant. But I love it. BS attack shock, so everything is shock. It doesn't matter from that multi-sniper rifle. It's always shock. He's got mimetism minus three. He's got stealth. He's got total terrain with his multi-sniper rifle and AP heavy pistol, so he's good in close range, too. Close combat weapon, 1.5 SWC, and 32 points. Knopf goes into every single Merovingia list I make. He is absolutely an auto-include for me, and he is an active turn killer, and I love it. Definitely try out Knopf. That one shot, one kill, it's really three shots and one kill, but things will still die. Knopf is incredible in this army. 100% incredible. All right, we only got two to go, and they're both characters. And we're going to talk about probably my favorite character just because of his backstory. And that's Brigadier Jacques Bruant. Because he's a mean swine, a real mean swine, as quoted by Veronin. So he's a, he's a Metro, but a Metro on steroids. That's how good he is. Movement 4-4, 15 CC, 12 BS, 11 Fizz, 13 Whip, 2 Armor, no BTS, 1 Wound. He's got an X-Visor. Okay, I like X-Visors. Who doesn't like X-Visors? Camouflage, 1 Use. Okay, so he gets a good single shot off. He's got Mimetism. He's a Specialist Operative. He's got Stealth. He's got Total Terrain. Wait, he's got Camouflage, 1 Use. Where? Where's the Surprise Attack? That's right. Bruant doesn't have surprise attack, but he doesn't need surprise attack to whip the crap out of your opponent. Do not bother with the lieutenant option. It isn't worth it. I do not like maybe somebody else does, and good for you that you want to make a high burst weapon your lieutenant. Good for you. I will not, and I will not ever. Infiltrate, but he is a wild card. His non-infiltration option is a wild card. That's a good, cheap guy to bring to your link team or into a Harris. Really solid, but my favorite is the infiltration option for two more points. 
With infiltration, AP Spitfire, Chain Colt, and D-Charges, pistol, close combat weapon, one SWC, and 30 points. That's only two points more than his regular. So now we know that infiltration really only costs two points. That's all I'm saying. If you want to give something infiltration CB, it's only going to cost you two more points. So stop raising all these prices. It's garbage. Stop it. Brigadier Bruant with an AP Spitfire in the midfield with an X visor is stupid. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it, again, one game's with Bruant just going on a rampage. Yep, he cannot Rambo through everything. But if you pick your targets carefully and you counter deploy with him, save him as your reserve, and then put him where he is going to do the most work and just take out orders from your opponent, he's ungodly good. Brigadier Bruant is ungodly good, and you should definitely try him out. Yes, his model has aged terribly and again really hard to find but he's so good he's so good i love bruant all right and moving on to our last last character and last profile that we're going to go over is the brand new one wolfgang amadeus wolf who is in fact french which is why he's in this army you're going to get him in the new Crimson Stone if you pre-ordered that bad boy, which I did. I was so excited to get my hand on Wolfgang. He is a warband. The only other warband is Duroc, so he's actually the only single warband that we have. Move 4-4, 4, 4, 22 CC, 12 BS, 14 Fizz, 13 Whip, 3 Armor, 3 BTS, and 2 Wounds because he is a Wolver. He's got Martial Arts Level 3. That's amazing. Berserk plus 3. Incredible. Courage. Dodge two plus two inch. He doesn't slow down. I love it. Four inches. I'm good. So I dodge. I move two inches, but I get to move another two inches. He does not slow down to get him where he needs to go. Dodge plus three. I dodge on a 17. Yes, please. Yes, please. All day. Frenzy. Keeping his points down. Immunity to shock. Fantastic. Climbing plus because he's a wolver. And terrain zero G. Yes. Wolfgang fills a role that Merovingia did not have. Yes, you had Duroc, but now you have a CC specialist. With his Berserk plus three and martial arts level three, he is there to destroy things in CC. And he's really good at it. And he's not a bad shot either because he comes with a multi-rifle plus one burst. That's amazing. He's got a chain cult, a heavy pistol, a DA close combat weapon, and a paralysis close combat weapon minus six for 35 points. In regards to all of the things, he is the most expensive single thing, like just single unit in all of Air. Or in all of Merovingia, minus the tag. This is the most expensive thing. But he is so worth it because he is a wild card. He can actually lead a Harris team and have five shots because he's got a multi-rifle plus one burst. So the multi-rifle is standard three shots. You get an additional shot in a three-link team or more, so that's four shots. But he's got plus one burst, so I've got five shots from my multi-rifle. Yes, please. Wolfgang, you don't need a high burst weapon to go with this. I like to link him up with the loop gurus. I really do. I like to have him with two viral rifle loop gurus and Wolfgang, and they just run up the field. But you don't have to put him in a Harris. He is fantastic all on his own, by himself. Wolfgang Amadeus Wolf just puts everything together for Murph. I love Murph, and you should definitely try them out. If you can't get a hold of everything, proxy with TAC and U.S. Ariadna. I can send pictures if you really want them. There's also another guy that's on the Ariadna Facebook page that also did this with his U.S. Ariadna force and turned those guys into his Merovingian army, and he did a fantastic job with painting them. You should really check Mount to give you some ideas. But that's it for Merovingia. 
I hope you enjoyed the con the overview. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell icon. We're having new stuff coming out very shortly. A lot of new good things, especially with Crimson Stone. Really about to drop and all of the upgrades that Corrigador and Cosmoflot is about to get. So stay tuned, guys, and I'll see you next time.